Have you ever been in a place where you just wish that you could get, I don't know, maybe help from above? You could just figure out this thing that you were called to do. Why isn't it going right? What could I do that would make everything go right? If you've ever been there or if you're there now, a lot of times we can find ourselves when we're making a transition or a jump into something new, we tend to walk into the space and place of saying, am I doing it right? Is this the right thing or should I be doing something else? Well, you are in the right place, my friend. That is what we are talking about. And today we're gonna to be helping you find some keys to connecting with your meaningful work, the thing that you were called to do. Do you remember maybe the moments in high school where a guidance counselor would make an appointment with you and they would help you to choose a vocation and they would bring you into their office and sit you down and talk to you. I remember that moment for myself. This happened to appear in my twice to me, once in my sophomore year and once in my junior year. Both of them were basically a repeat one of the other. When I sat down with my guidance counselor, they said, um, what vocation will you choose? Uh, I, I don't know. I like, I like kids. I like helping people, but I think I also, I, I love art. I think I want to be an artist. I said, well, no, all artists starve. And there's really nothing to do in this area. You should become a health professional. Health services are growing. Medical, your, your stores are at the area where you should be a doctor or some sort of technician, you, you should move your career in that direction. And um, it, it was almost a side swipe for me. There was something I'd never considered before in my life. And it didn't really feel great, to be honest with you. I felt like someone was telling me I couldn't be what I wanted to be. Well, fast forward the next year, we had the exact same conversation. And I'm wondering if you've ever had a conversation like that with someone in your life. Maybe it was a parent. Maybe it was someone in the clergy. Maybe it was a family member or a teacher or like myself, a guidance counselor. And maybe, maybe your hopes were dashed because you felt like what you wanted was stupid and you didn't have the permission from the right people to step into that. That was me. And that actually led me on the quest that I'm on now. Before we get into that though, I want to tell you something interesting that didn't occur to me really until I was in my late forties. Did you know that the word vocation actually means calling? Think about it. Voca, vocal, vocation. Your vocation is the work you're called to do. So how could it be that someone in an office was telling me what it was that was calling me? And I understand I'm not mad at that person. They meant well. I'm going to give you three keys and a bonus key if you hang out at the end. I'm going to give you three keys to understanding what your calling is. Find your calling. Uh, at the end of these things, uh, I'm not going to give you the answers. I'm not filling in the blanks. You are. As a matter of fact, um, my whole hope is to help you illuminate yourself. The story of that shows exactly what we're doing uh, has to do with when I was proposing to my wife. And in, as a part of the process, you go to the diamond store, they pull out the diamond, but they don't just show it to you. You don't just put it in your hand. They take it and they put it in front of a black cloth and they shine a real bright light on it. And then they turn it in the light. And what they say is, they say, do, do you see this cut? Do you see this clarity? And then they turn it again and you see another aspect of its beauty. You and I are like the diamond. 
And even when we think we know who it is that we are and what it is that we're designed for, there's always another turn. There's always another way that we can glance at ourselves. And so my hope is with these three principles is to help you to get a good glance at a different aspect of your beauty, of your desires, of your design. So as we go through, don't necessarily listen to the scholastic part of it. I want you to allow this to eliminate parts of your life, thoughts that you have about you. So let's get in. Uh, the first of these keys is going to be curiosity. Curiosity. Curiosity killed the cat. Yeah, maybe, but it also probably brought the cat into some pretty cool adventures. Curiosity is something that we, it, it, it's a drive to learn when there's no need to learn. In the famous story of the Wright brothers versus Samuel Pierpont Langley, um, Sim, Sam, uh, Simon Sinek actually chronicles this in Start With Why, but he misses one aspect of it, actually a couple of aspects. One thing that it's interesting, Samuel Pierpont Langley was driven by the money, the reward, and the fame to create the first powered man flight. Orville and Wilbur Wright, they really didn't have this desire to change the way that mankind travels. They had no desire for fame. They were okay with the money. They were really would be happy about that. They only owned a bicycle shop. They were driven by curiosity. Can this be done? How can we do this? And their curiosity led to something that's changed the world. Think about space age technology. It's usually in the form of something you, you, you put in your office or sit on or use in your, your exercise. There's space age technology everywhere. Silly putty, duct tape. Uh, I don't know. They're like cameras. All of this, the, like the mirror lenses that we use. A lot of this stuff is space age technology. We were driven to do something that was great. And, and it was the pursuit itself that yielded profitable things. The reason I share that last line is because a lot of times you get past the age of the 20s or the 30s and adults tend to shut down curiosity. It's not profitable. It doesn't feel profitable. It feels wasteful. But I want to open that door up. For some of you, you may need to look far back in the past and remember, what was it I was curious about what are the things that I would learn, even if no one forced me to learn? What would those things be? Curiosity occurs through exposure. It occurs through you and I finding new places, new themes, new different things that actually provoke different thought. That's where curiosity comes from. So I will ask you a few questions that hopefully uncover some curiosities that you have. What were your favorite subjects in school? Art, history, science, math, college, high school. As a kid, what could no one stop you from doing? Video games, um, drawing, playing. What, what were those things? Those natural curiosities. If I dropped you off in a bookstore, which section would you go to? If I were to check your internet browsing history, what are the things that dominate your attention? These, my friend, are curiosities. And while if you let them grow wild, they're, they're not the best thing, if we use these as indicators, they can be a compass. Last thought on this, and we'll move to the next one. When we would homeschool our children, we had eight of them. All of them were homeschooled at one point or another. We always looked for their God-given design, their bent, 
Uh, and, and when I say bent, it's like, how, how are they bent? Some go towards um, history. We have, uh, we have one of our uh, sons, he's a grown person now, still loves history. Others, it's more towards opportunity. And so we have those, those two have grown into really solid entrepreneurs. Others, it's been more about art and exploration. And other, it might be helping or connecting. And, and so understand if you're bent a certain way, maybe don't fight that. Maybe use that. There are a lot of opportunities that your curiosity can open you to, can bring you to. So that's the first C, curiosity. It unlocks some really good things in life. Don't leave it behind. The next one we're going to talk about is creation. Now, I could say creativity, but I, I, I really want you to think about the things that you create. Every human being is here to be curious, which is to learn and find new things. You are a learner, and every human being is here to make something. What is it that you naturally find yourself making? You might have a whole career based on this. You might have a hobby that has come from this. Or you might have things that you've started but never quite completed. I'm gonna, we'll divert. With these two, if you have creativity and you have curiosity, you might be, oh, I don't know like a polymath, like Leonardo da Vinci. Um, this guy not only completed 200 masterpieces, including The Last Supper, cultural influencing work. He also was a sculptor. He also was an architect. He also was an inventor. He was curious. He, he had people peel up the human body so he could look at anatomy and physiology. He would draw out things that would look like a fifth grader's um, you know, notebook, army tanks and helicopters and guns and parachutes and things that, that didn't even exist at the time he would draw up. He's actually very famous for it being impossible or very difficult to know which work was his or not his because he would start so many things and not necessarily finish. So if you find yourself being creative and also curious, you're in good company. It's not necessarily a bad thing. But what are the things that you create? Do you write? Do you, like, is it drawing? Do you create music? Do you create food? Do you create an atmosphere? Do you create videos? Oddly, we were going through a little bit of our history. And um, one of our sons, who is 20 years old, we were laughing um, because we, were, we, we found something to plug in the old videos, the VCRs and the mini DVs and all of those things. And we actually were talking about, we need to get a VCR because, and, and my wife laughed and all the kids knew that I used to carry one of the big giant video cameras around to different places we went to. I was that guy. Video has always been something that I've been curious about and that I've created with. That's just one of the things, but there are many things. What are the things you find yourself creating? Are you creating websites? Do you create, there, there are so many things. This world is full of people's creation. As a matter of fact, this is kind of fun. Look around in your room right now at anything that is that you, that you like. Here, I'll grab something. A person just like you thought this up. A person just like you took license to create, but we don't create. Why don't we create? Because we need time, we need money, we, need, we, we, we don't believe in ourselves. There's, there's, there are reasons that stop us from creation. And we say things like, if I just had the time and money, I would create. If I had time and money, I would be curious, but it feels very, very wasteful. I'm asking you to identify some of the things that naturally flow out of you. You follow me so far? The idea is, is that if you can, if you can look at these things, it might inform you of a different design of the work that you're doing, or maybe a different work altogether. Let's get to the final C. 
of the day. And this C is connection. Connection. Connection is uh, the way that we're defining it is how you connect what you do to a who. Connection is your who. And it's not, it's not the who, like when we talk about the 10 P's and finding the people you're meant to professionally serve. Um, it's, it's more, it's, it's more the type of, of, of way that you interact with almost anyone. And there are two aspects I like to look at in terms of this connection. There's the connection that flows from you. And then there's the one that flows to you. And for whatever reasons, all of us get blockages based on what we see, what we feel, what, what, what our past has been or whatever. We get things that kind of sometimes get in the way, but we all have a natural way of connecting. So I'll start with the easy one and it might actually, it might give a clue to the one that maybe not is not as easy for a lot of us. They say that it's easier to give or better to give than receive. A lot of us feel we'd rather be the giver than the receiver. So let's talk about how you connect through giving to people. There are a variety of ways that people uh, allow a flow to connect from them to others with me. Obviously, I'm speaking. I'm teaching. This is, this is the way that I like to connect. Once upon a time, a big part of my life was, was to be someone who influenced people to buy. I was a salesperson. And I was on the higher end of mediocre, but I was I never really, it wasn't a love. It wasn't a love for me. This, this is a love. So teaching is one aspect. Influencing. Are you the person that likes to influence? Are you a person who likes to entertain? Maybe you make people laugh. Do you like to give people a feeling of belonging? Maybe you're Maybe you like to fire people up with preaching. You, you like to encourage people. Are you a healer? You like to heal. Are you a helper? You like to aid others. Like that's what releases your superpower. You like to create a vibe. You like to listen to people. The way you, that you give to others is you listen and make them feel understood. Uh, are you a provider? Do you, is it your preferred method or means to actually provide financially or structurally for other, for other people? Do you like to figure things out for people? Humor. Do you like to push people? So these are some of the ways that you might look at and say, these are the ways, I, yeah, I like to give this way. And I've only listed a few. There are so many ways that people connect to others. We, we, we help, you are designed to help people. What is your natural design? I, I like to make, I am, <laughs> everyone calls me the, the baby whisperer. I am good with kids. I love kids. I love to make them feel like, like special, like they belong. I'm great at it. I'm not using that as my career. You might have lots of, you know, there, there are different modalities and it doesn't necessarily create a career, but it can give you direction on how your interaction should flow. So that's output. What about input? For input, do you like to be um, entertained? Do you like to be um, listened to? Do you, um, like, how do you, what makes you feel connected when other people do this to you? So when they give you things, maybe they, they give you advice. Maybe they listen to you. They see you. Maybe they share vulner vulnerably with you. What are the things that make you feel connected to other individuals? And I, I don't know all of the answers to like, th there's probably dozens of things that we could, we could go through here. One of the easiest ways to look at this though, is to say, what actually annoys you when it doesn't happen? When, if this doesn't happen, I get mad. If so, for some people, like if you don't get to the point, I get annoyed, you know, or other people's like, if I feel like you don't care, I am so like over it. For me, if I feel like no one is listening to me, that I wasn't heard. So imagine uh, for me, if I, if I say things to someone 
and they're, and they're looking at me and then I'm like, but, and I feel like they give me advice that didn't take into account what I just now said. That's why I go through, <laughs> I go through so many coaches personally, because it is a, it, most coaches want to give you their format. Here's follow this step. And here's the four step process of focus. And here is the, I mean, I myself have the 10 P's. So I, I understand maybe how this can, can be perceived, but at the same time, like, I feel like if you're going to put me through something that doesn't feel like it was for me, I'm out. So if I feel like I'm not listened to or heard, I'm done. What is the annoyance for you? And then what is the reflection of what, what is the need or the connection point that that shows for you? What are those? I think when we see these, it, it can show you a different way. This is you turning the diamond just a little bit more in seeing something that says, ah, I love this guy. I love this gal. When, whenever you can see yourself and you can see with love, it gives you the power to step into something, perhaps in a way that no one else has done it before. Yeah. Like no one else has done it before. Yeah, there maybe have been thousands of people who've done what you're doing, but no one does it like you. When you show up as original, that, my friend, is where confidence and power can come from. But we, we need sometimes to take those moments to assess. And this is you valuating the value of what you're bringing and also the value of what, what's out there here in the world. What are you curious about? What do you create and what makes you feel connected? These, my friend, here's the fourth key, show you your calling. And your calling unlocks all kinds of doors. Your calling is where you are unique. And no one else can go through the doors that you go through. Your calling, your vocation. Conviction flows from that. Amazing things happen to that. And, and all of us want to serve and connect and help people like that because we want to believe that about ourselves. So if you can use these, I believe that we can, we can make the world a better place. We can release our magic. And, and my ask of you is to get alone and ask yourself those questions. What am I curious about? Right? What is my calling? What? What, what do I create? What do I want to create? How do I connect with others? How do I bring that connection to others? That is my ask of you.